In the high-stakes world of global technology, one name has become synonymous with innovation, controversy, and resilience. Huawei. Once a symbol of China's rising tech power, Huawei found itself at the center of a geopolitical storm. In a move that shook the tech industry, the U.S. government imposed sweeping sanctions aimed at crippling Huawei's operations and halting China's technological ascent. What was meant to be a fatal blow became a turning point. Huawei's collapse seemed inevitable. The company lost access to critical components, and profits plummeted as the world's largest economies turned their backs on it. Experts believed it was the end of an era for Chinese technology. But remarkably, Huawei didn't just survive. It fought back, embarking on a bold and unexpected path to recovery. How did a company on the brink of extinction rise from the ashes to become a symbol of China's defiance? What strategies did it employ to beat U.S. sanctions and emerge stronger than ever? In this documentary, we'll unravel Huawei's incredible comeback story and reveal the three key strategies China used to transform a near-catastrophic situation into a historic triumph. This is the untold story of how Huawei defied the odds and reshaped the global tech landscape. To understand Huawei's remarkable comeback, we need to look at the series of events that nearly brought the tech giant to its knees. Beginning in 2016, the US launched a massive wave of sanctions against China, targeting over 70 of its most advanced tech companies. Huawei, China's telecom powerhouse, became the prime target. Because Huawei represented more than just a tech company, it symbolized China's rapid rise as a global technology leader. The U.S. government viewed Huawei's dominance in 5G technology and its close ties to the Chinese government as a potential national security threat. Washington's goal was clear, to stop the rise of Chinese technology and, in particular, cripple Huawei's ability to develop critical advancements like artificial intelligence and 5G networks. The belief was that if Huawei could no longer access the latest chips, software, and components from American companies, it would be forced into a retreat leaving the U.S. with a technological edge. In 2018, the U.S. escalated its offensive with the arrest of Meng Wanzhou, Huawei's CFO and the daughter of its founder, accusing her of violating sanctions against Iran. Overnight, Huawei found itself in the crosshairs of a full-blown trade war. American companies were banned from supplying critical components to Huawei, and countries around the world were pressured to sever ties with the Chinese telecom giant. The effect was swift and brutal. By 2021, Huawei's revenue plunged by 30%, and its profits collapsed by 70%. It seemed like the US strategy was working, Huawei was bleeding, and its global influence was waning. But behind the scenes, something extraordinary was happening. Rather than fold, Huawei began plotting its comeback. A fight that would not only ensure its survival but transform the future of Chinese technology forever. By 2019, Huawei was staring down an existential crisis. The U.S. sanctions had struck with precision, cutting off Huawei's access to vital components like advanced microchips and software from American companies like Qualcomm and Google. These were the lifeblood of Huawei's smartphone and telecom businesses, and without them, the future looked bleak. Forced to sell its flagship smartphone brand, Honor, and watching its global market share plummet, the company's survival seemed unlikely. The arrest of Meng Wanzhou, Huawei's CFO and the daughter of its founder, Ren Zhengfei, in 2018, marked a turning point in this battle. Meng's detention in Canada, on charges of violating U.S. sanctions on Iran, sent shockwaves through China. The U.S. government's strategy of isolating Huawei seemed to be working. Revenues nosedived, and in 2022, Huawei reported a staggering 70% drop in net profits. Ren, a former Chinese army officer who had founded Huawei from his small apartment in 1987, faced the toughest challenge of his career. Yet, as Huawei's prospects darkened, a remarkable transformation began. In a memo to employees, Ren issued a rallying cry. Huawei's goal was no longer global dominance, it was survival. The company shifted focus, pivoting away from international markets and redirecting its resources toward China's massive domestic market. Ren's vision was clear. Huawei would adapt, innovate, and fight back. 
Behind the scenes, Huawei was quietly laying the groundwork for a comeback. It began developing its own technologies, reducing its reliance on foreign suppliers. What seemed like the end of an era for the tech giant was, in reality, the start of a remarkable turnaround. Against all odds, Huawei was preparing to rise from the brink of collapse, ready to redefine its future. As Huawei faced a barrage of US sanctions and global isolation, many assumed it was the beginning of the end for China's most iconic tech company. With the world's biggest economies shutting their doors to Huawei and cutting off its access to vital components, it looked like the once mighty telecommunications giant would crumble. But behind the scenes, Huawei and the Chinese government had begun quietly orchestrating a comeback, one that would not only ensure the company's survival but would also reshape China's entire tech landscape. This revival was built on a carefully crafted three-step strategy that highlights the resilience and determination of both Huawei and China in the face of immense adversity. The first key to Huawei's survival lay in an unexpected move, pivoting inward. With its access to international markets shrinking, Huawei turned its focus to China's vast domestic market. Instead of relying on foreign consumers and suppliers, the company started serving the needs of Chinese industries, positioning itself as a national champion in the face of U.S. aggression. This strategy shift began in earnest in 2021, after Rin Zhengfei, Huawei's founder, delivered a powerful message to the company's employees, our goal is no longer global expansion, it's survival. That survival would come from Huawei's ability to adapt quickly and redirect its resources toward industries that were still accessible. The Chinese domestic market became Huawei's lifeline. Huawei began leveraging its expertise in telecommunications to develop and implement cutting-edge technology in critical domestic sectors. For example, the company played a key role in building some of the world's most advanced smart ports, like the one in Tianjin, which utilizes 5G networks to automate cargo handling. Huawei's 5G technology also found new applications in industries like mining, where it helped advance safety and efficiency in China's coal sector, one of the country's most vital industries. This diversification allowed Huawei to generate new revenue streams and establish itself as an indispensable partner in China's industrial modernization. The results were impressive. By 2023, nearly 70% of Huawei's revenue came from China. The company successfully repositioned itself as a major player in sectors like transportation, energy, and agriculture. Rather than succumb to US pressure, Huawei had transformed itself from a global smartphone powerhouse into a domestic tech leader serving China's critical infrastructure. Huawei's second key strategy was more than just a business move, it was a cultural one. Huawei cleverly positioned itself as the symbol of Chinese resilience, portraying itself as a victim of U.S. bullying and a champion of China's technological future. This approach sparked a wave of national pride and loyalty among Chinese consumers and businesses, propelling the company to new heights of popularity within its home country. One of the most defining moments in Huawei's comeback was the return of Meng Wanzhou to China. After being detained in Canada for nearly three years under U.S. charges, Meng's homecoming in 2021 became a national spectacle. She was greeted as a hero upon her return to China, with state media portraying her release as a victory against Western imperialism. Her emotional remarks on the runway, where she spoke of how the fate of an individual, a corporation and a country were intertwined, struck a deep chord with the Chinese people. Huawei seized this moment to strengthen its patriotic image. The company's marketing campaigns began emphasizing its role in China's national security and technological independence. By aligning itself with the broader narrative of China's rise and resistance to foreign interference, Huawei cultivated a sense of national pride among its customers and partners. This patriotic appeal paid off. Even as Huawei's global market share shrank due to sanctions, its domestic market presence surged. Chinese consumers began to see purchasing Huawei products as a patriotic act, a way to support a national champion under siege. The company's ability to weather the sanctions became a source of pride for many in China, and Huawei's products, from smartphones to telecom infrastructure, were increasingly embraced as symbols of national strength and independence. 
Huawei's comeback would not have been possible without the unwavering support of the Chinese government. From the beginning, the government identified Huawei as a strategically important company, one that was critical not just for economic growth, but for national security and technological sovereignty. This recognition translated into significant financial and regulatory backing, which helped Huawei navigate the storm of U.S. sanctions. In response to the sanctions, the Chinese government ramped up subsidies, tax incentives, and contracts for Huawei. This support allowed the company to continue investing in research and development at a time when its revenues were severely impacted. In fact, despite its financial struggles, Huawei outspent many of its competitors in R&D, focusing heavily on developing homegrown technologies to replace the foreign components it could no longer access. One area where this investment paid off was in the development of new microchips. With the US cutting off Huawei's access to advanced chips, the company and the Chinese government turned to domestic chipmakers, encouraging rapid innovation in China's semiconductor industry. By 2023, Huawei was reportedly working on an AI chip that could rival the most advanced chips produced by NVIDIA, one of the world's leading semiconductor companies. The Chinese government also facilitated partnerships between Huawei and other domestic companies, fostering collaboration to mitigate the effects of the sanctions. Chinese firms like Baidu and China Mobile became important allies, collaborating with Huawei to build new technologies and infrastructure projects that would reduce the country's dependence on foreign suppliers. This network of domestic partnerships helped Huawei build a more resilient supply chain and strengthen its position as a leader in China's tech sector. Through these three strategies, shifting to domestic consumption, fueling national patriotism, and leveraging government support, Huawei not only survived but began to thrive once again. The company's revenues rebounded, its presence in the domestic market solidified, and its innovation pipeline remained robust despite losing access to some of the world's most advanced technologies. By 2023, Huawei had not only regained its footing but had also set itself on a path to challenge some of the global tech giants that had once seemed untouchable. The company's ability to adapt to unprecedented pressure and emerge stronger highlights the resilience of China's tech industry as a whole. In the process, Huawei became a symbol of China's broader strategy for navigating U.S. sanctions, a strategy that could have long-term implications for the global tech landscape. Huawei's story is not just one of corporate survival, it's a blueprint for how China, under intense scrutiny and economic pressure, managed to turn adversity into opportunity. What was intended to be the downfall of a tech giant instead became a turning point, marking the rise of a new, more self-sufficient chapter for Huawei and for China's technology ambitions. As the US-China tech rivalry intensifies, the future is shaping up to be a defining chapter not only for the two superpowers but for global innovation and economic dominance. What began as targeted sanctions against a few Chinese companies has evolved into a full-scale tech cold war. The US is determined to curb China's technological rise, while China, fueled by resilience, has adopted strategies to become self-reliant and less dependent on foreign technologies. This rivalry will likely extend into crucial areas like artificial intelligence, semiconductor manufacturing, and 5G infrastructure. Both nations are investing heavily in these fields, with China accelerating its development of domestic semiconductor production and AI capabilities, while the US is doubling down on efforts to maintain its edge through initiatives like the CHIPS Act, which aims to bolster America's semiconductor industry. In the coming years, we can expect further decoupling between the two nations, as China seeks to create a parallel tech ecosystem that is insulated from Western influence. This will impact everything from global supply chains to consumer electronics. The world may see the emergence of two distinct technological standards, leading to a divided digital landscape where countries may have to choose between US or Chinese technologies. Ultimately, this rivalry will define the global balance of power for decades to come, with profound implications for innovation, global cooperation, and the future of technology itself. The race is on, and both nations are charging ahead, determined to secure their place at the forefront of the next technological revolution.
The US-China tech rivalry is reshaping the global landscape, with Huawei's incredible comeback serving as a powerful example of resilience and adaptation. What was once a targeted attempt to cripple China's tech sector has instead fueled its innovation and determination. The competition between these two superpowers will continue to evolve, influencing not just the future of technology, but also international relations and global markets. Thank you for joining us on this journey.